The Sun is the star at the center of the solar system. It is a massive, hot ball of plasma, inflated and heated by nuclear fusion reactions at its core. Part of this internal energy is emitted from its surface as light, ultraviolet, and infrared radiation, providing most of the energy for life on Earth. The Sun moves around the galactic center of the Milky Way, at a distance of 26,660 light-years. From Earth it is on average 10.496108 kilometers, or about 8 light minutes far away. Its diameter is about 1,391,400 kilometers, 864,600 miles, 4.64 ls, 109 times that of Earth or 4 lunar distances. Its mass is about 330,000 times that of Earth, making up about 99.86% of the total mass of the solar system. Roughly three quarters of the Sun's mass consists of hydrogen, 73%, the rest is mostly helium, 25%. With much smaller quantities of heavier elements, including oxygen, carbon, neon, and iron. The Sun is a G-type main sequence star, G2V, informally called a yellow dwarf, though its light is actually white. It formed approximately 4.6 billion years ago from the gravitational collapse of matter within a region of a large molecular cloud. Most of this matter gathered in the center, whereas the rest flattened into an orbiting disk that became the solar system. The central mass became so hot and dense that it eventually initiated nuclear fusion in its core. It is thought that almost all stars form by this process. Every second, the Sun's core fuses about 600 million tons of hydrogen into helium, and in the process converts 4 million tons of matter into energy. This energy, which can take between 10,000 and 170,000 years to escape the core, is the source of the Sun's light and heat. Far in the future, when hydrogen fusion in the Sun's core diminishes to the point where the Sun is no longer in hydrostatic equilibrium, its core will undergo a marked increase in density and temperature which will push its outer layers to expand, eventually transforming the Sun into a red giant. This process will make the Sun large enough to render Earth uninhabitable approximately 5 billion years from the present. After this, the Sun will shed its outer layers and become a dense type of cooling star, a white dwarf, and no longer produce energy by fusion, but still glow and give off heat from its previous fusion. The enormous effect of the Sun on Earth has been recognized since prehistoric times and was thought of by some cultures as a deity. The synodic rotation of Earth and its orbit around the Sun are the basis of some solar calendars. The predominant calendar in use today is the Gregorian calendar which is based upon the standard 16th century interpretation of the Sun's observed movement as actual movement. The English word Sun developed from Old English Sun. Cognates appear. In other Germanic languages, including West Frisian Sin, Dutch Son, Low German Sun, Standard German Son, Bavarian Sunna, Old Norse Sunna, and Gothic Sunno. All these words stem from Proto-Germanic asterisk Sunnen. This is ultimately related to the word for Sun in other branches of the Indo-European language family, though in most cases a nominative stem with an L is found, rather than the genitive. Stem in N, as for example in Latin Sol, Ancient Greek Lambda Iota Omicron, Helios, Welsh Hall, and Czech Slunts, as well as, with asterisk LR, Sanskrit, Spar, and Persian, Atar. Indeed, the L stem survived in Proto-Germanic as well, as asterisk Saulan, which gave rise to Gothic Saul, alongside Sunno, and Old Norse Prosaic Sol, alongside Poetic Sunna, and through it the words for Sun in the modern Scandinavian languages, Swedish and Danish soul, Icelandic soul, etc. The principal adjectives for the sun in English are sunny for sunlight and, in technical contexts, solar, slash sol slash, comma duck from Latin soul, the latter found in terms such as solar day, solar eclipse, and solar system. From the Greek helios comes the rare adjective heliac, slash helix slash. In English, the Greek and Latin words occur in poetry as personifications of the sun, Helios, slash Hillis slash, and Sol, slash SL slash, while in science fiction Sol may be used to distinguish the Sun from other stars. The term Sol with a lowercase s is used by planetary astronomers for the duration of a solar day on another planet such as Mars. The English weekday name Sunday stems from Old English Sunanda Egg Sun's Day, a Germanic interpretation of the Latin. Phrase die solis, itself a translation of the ancient Greek Neuro Alpha Lambda Omicron Upsilon, Hemera Helio, Day of the Sun. 
The astronomical symbol for the Sun is a circle with a center dot. It is used for such units as M, solar mass, R, solar radius, and L, solar luminosity. The Sun is a G-type main sequence star that makes up about 99.86% of the mass of the solar system. The Sun has an absolute magnitude of plus 4.83, estimated to be brighter than about 85% of the stars in the Milky Way, most of which are red dwarfs. The Sun is a populationite, or heavy element-rich, star. Its formation may have been triggered by shockwaves from one or more nearby supernovae. This is suggested by a high abundance of heavy elements in the solar system, such as gold and uranium, relative to the abundances of these elements. In so-called population 2, heavy element 4, stars. The heavy elements could most plausibly have been produced by endothermic nuclear reactions during a supernova, or by transmutation through neutron absorption within a massive second-generation star. The Sun is by far the brightest object in the Earth's sky, with an apparent magnitude of 26.74. This is about 13 billion times brighter than the next brightest star, Sirius, which has an apparent magnitude of 1.46. One astronomical unit, about 150 million kilometers, 93 million miles, is defined as the mean distance of the Sun's center to Earth's center, though the distance varies by about plus slash 2.5 million kilometers or 1.55 million miles, as Earth moves from perihelion on about January 3rd to aphelion on about July 4th. The distances can vary between 147,098,074 kilometers, perihelion, and 152,097,701 kilometers, aphelion, and extreme values can range from 147,083,346 kilometers to 152,112,126 kilometers. At its average distance, light travels from the sun's horizon to Earth's horizon in about 8 minutes and 20 seconds, while light from the closest points of the sun and Earth takes about 2 seconds less. The energy of this sunlight supports almost all life on Earth by photosynthesis, and drives Earth's climate and weather. The Sun does not have a definite boundary, but its density decreases exponentially with increasing height above the photosphere. For the purpose of measurement, the Sun's radius is considered to be the distance from its center to the edge of the photosphere, the apparent visible surface of the Sun. By this measure, the Sun is a near-perfect sphere with an oblateness estimated at 9 millionths which means that its polar diameter differs from its equatorial diameter by only 10 kilometers, 6.2 miles. The tidal effect of the planets is weak and does not significantly affect the shape of the Sun. The Sun rotates faster at its equator than at its poles. This differential rotation is caused by convective motion due to heat transport and the Coriolis force due to the Sun's rotation. In a frame of reference defined by the stars, the rotational period is approximately 25.6 days at the equator and 33.5 days at the poles. Viewed from Earth as it orbits the Sun, the apparent rotational period of the Sun at its equator is about 28 days. Viewed from a vantage point above its North Pole, the Sun rotates counterclockwise around its axis of spin. The Sun consists primarily of the chemical elements hydrogen and helium. At this time in the Sun's life, they account for 74.9% and 23.8%, respectively, of the mass of the Sun in the photosphere. All heavier elements, called metals in astronomy, account for less than 2% of the mass, with oxygen, roughly 1% of the Sun's mass, carbon, 0.3%, neon, 0.2%, and iron, 0.2%, being the most abundant. In solar research it is more common to express the abundance of each element in dex, which is a scaled logarithmic unit, a, e, 12 plus log 10, ne slash nh, with e being the element in question and nh as 1012 hydrogen atoms. By definition hydrogen has an abundance of 12, the helium abundance varies between roughly 10.3 and 10.5 depending on the phase of the solar cycle, carbon is 8.47, neon is 8.29. Oxygen is 7.69 and iron is 7.62. The Sun's original chemical composition was inherited from the interstellar medium out of which it formed. Originally it would have contained about 71.1% hydrogen, 27.4% helium, and 1.5% heavier elements. 
The hydrogen and most of the helium in the Sun would have been produced by Big Bang nucleosynthesis in the first 20 minutes of the universe, and the heavier elements were produced by previous generations of stars before the Sun was formed, and spread into the interstellar medium during the final stages of stellar life and by events such as supernovae. Since the Sun formed, the main fusion process has involved fusing hydrogen into helium. Over the past 4.6 billion years, the amount of helium and its location within the Sun has gradually changed. Within the core, the proportion of helium has increased from about 24% to about 60% due to fusion, and some of the helium and heavy elements have settled from the photosphere towards the center of the Sun because of gravity. The proportions of heavier elements are unchanged. Heat is transferred outward from the Sun's core by radiation rather than by convection, see radiative zone below, so the fusion products are not lifted outward by heat, they remain in the core and gradually an inner core of helium has begun to form that cannot be fused because presently the Sun's core is not hot or dense enough to fuse helium. In the current photosphere, the helium fraction is reduced, and the metallicity is only 84% of what it was in the protostellar phase, before nuclear fusion in the core started. In the future, helium will continue to accumulate in the core, and in about 5 billion years this gradual buildup will eventually cause the Sun to exit the main sequence and become a red giant. The chemical composition of the photosphere is normally considered representative of the composition of the primordial solar system. The solar heavy element abundances described above are typically measured. Both using spectroscopy of the Sun's photosphere and by measuring abundances in meteorites that have never been heated to melting temperatures. These meteorites are thought to retain the composition of the protostellar Sun and are thus not affected by the settling of heavy elements. The two methods generally agree well. The core of the Sun extends from the center to about 20 to 25 percent of the solar radius. It has a density of up to 150 g cm3, about 150 times the density of water, and a temperature of close to 15.7 million Kelvin K. By contrast, the Sun's surface temperature is approximately 5,800 K. Recent analysis of SOHO mission data favors a faster rotation rate in the core than in the radiative zone above. Through most of the Sun's life, energy has been produced by nuclear fusion in the core region through the proton proton chain, this process converts hydrogen into helium. Currently, only 0.8% of the energy generated in the Sun comes from another sequence of fusion reactions called the CNO cycle, though this proportion is expected to increase as the Sun becomes older and more luminous. The core is the only region on the Sun that produces an appreciable amount of thermal energy. Through fusion, 99% of the power is generated within 24% of the Sun's radius, and by 30% of the radius, fusion has stopped nearly entirely. The remainder of the Sun is heated by this energy as it is transferred outwards through many successive layers, finally to the solar photosphere where it escapes into space through radiation, photons, or advection, massive particles. The proton, proton chain occurs around 9.21037 times each second in the core, converting about 3.71038 protons into alpha particles, helium nuclei, every second, out of a total of 8.910563 free protons in the Sun, or about 6.21011 kg s. However, each proton, on average, takes around 9 billion years to fuse with one another using the PP chain. Fusing four free protons, hydrogen nuclei, into a single alpha particle, helium. Nucleus, releases around 0.7% of the fused mass as energy, so the Sun releases energy as the mass, energy conversion rate of 4.26 million metric tons per second, which requires 600 metric megatons of hydrogen, or 384.6 yottawatts. 3.8461026W, or 9.1921010 megatons of TNT per second. The large power output of the Sun is mainly due to the huge size and density of its core, compared to Earth and objects on Earth, with only a fairly small amount of power being generated per cubic meter. Theoretical models of the Sun's interior indicate a maximum power density, or energy production, of approximately 276.5 watts per cubic meter at the center of the core, which, according to Carl Kresselnicki, is about the same power density inside a compost pile. The fusion rate in the core is in a 
Self-correcting equilibrium, a slightly higher rate of fusion would cause the core to heat up more and expand slightly against the weight of the outer layers, reducing the density and hence the fusion rate and correcting the perturbation, and a slightly lower rate would cause the core to cool and shrink slightly, increasing the density and increasing the fusion rate and again reverting it to its present rate. The radiative zone is the thickest layer of the sun, at 0.45 solar radii. From the core out to about 0.7 solar radii, thermal radiation is the primary means of energy transfer. The temperature drops from approximately 7 million to 2 million kelvins with increasing distance from the core. This temperature gradient is less than the value of the adiabatic lapse rate and hence cannot drive convection which explains why the transfer of energy through this zone is by radiation instead of thermal convection. Ions of hydrogen and helium emit photons, which travel only a brief distance before being reabsorbed by other ions. The density drops a hundredfold, from 20,000 kg M3 to 200 kg per cubic meter, between 0.25 solar radii and 0.7 radii, the top of the radiative zone. The radiative zone and the convective zone are separated by a transition layer.